The world is taking a closer look at the diary of this real-life princess. Princess Sophia of Sweden isn't like other royal leaders. She lives her life in a way that promotes happiness and wellness across her country and the world. This down-to-earth mom and former fashion model is relatively casual in front of the press, and through recent events, proved that despite the crown and scepter, she's just like us. Despite a rocky start to her career as a royal, people have come to love and appreciate the princess for her passion and desire to help those around her. She's learned how to use her platform and influence for a greater good. Before joining the royal family and becoming a princess, Sophia Christina Helkvist was born in Danderyd, a city north of Stockholm. Her family soon moved from Tabby to Alvdelin, along with her parents, Eric Helkvist and Mary Rotman. Alvdelin, with its fairy tale scenery and picturesque mountains and lakes, was a fitting formative land for a princess to be. Sophia's childhood in the rural town was filled with outdoor adventures such as playing at lakes and skiing. As a young adult, Sophia had a much different experience than most royals. At 20, Sophia was out on her own, earning a living and making her way in the world. She was cast in the reality TV show Paradise Hotel. For the show, Sophia and other single 20-somethings lived in a luxury resort and competed against each other, trying not to get eliminated. Sophia lasted until the finale. In Sweden, Sophia also studied at Stockholm University, where she furthered her education in global ethics, child and youth science, and child studies and communication communication, which included a study of the theory of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. While living in Stockholm, Sophia supported herself by working as a glamour model and part-time waitress. Sophia moved to New York in 2005, where she studied accounting and business development. While living in New York, Sophia worked as a yoga instructor and taught classes to make her way through school. Upon returning to Sweden, Sophia went out for a dinner with friends and a night that changed her life forever. At the restaurant, her friends ran into a group of mutual acquaintances. Among them was Prince Carl Philip of Sweden, Duke of Varmland. When the pair went public with their relationship in 2010, the press attempted to bring up Sophia's past, sharing unflattering photos of the former model's early days. Sophia combated the negative media attention with grace, sticking by her choices and the path that brought her to where she is. I was met with an enormous hate storm from people who had opinions about me as a person, about my relationship. I was surprised and it definitely affected me. I don't regret anything. All these experiences have made me the person I am. I wouldn't have made those choices today. In April of 2011, the couple moved in together. In an interview with South China Morning Post, Sophia said, The first thing I noticed about Carl Philip was that he seemed very humble. Three years later, they announced their engagement and were married in June of 2015, transforming the creative and ambitious girl from the countryside into Her Royal Highness Princess Sophia of Sweden, Duchess of Varmland. For the much-planned and watched event of the royal wedding, Sophia wore a fitted silk and lace dress by Swedish designer Ida Huestet. She topped off the modern wedding attire with a stunning tiara encrusted with diamonds and emeralds. The headpiece was a wedding present from her new in-laws, King Carl XVI Gustav and Queen Sylvia, showing that Sophia was more than accepted into the family. The wedding playlist featured some very with it tracks, including Rihanna's Umbrella and Coldplay's Fix You. Sophia even wrote and performed a song for her new husband. A year later, the couple welcomed their son, Prince Alexander, Duke of Södermanland. Prince Gabriel, Duke of Dalarna, was born the following summer. During her time as a royal princess, Sophia has shown the world that no matter your background or past, anyone has the potential to step up to an important role and lead with confidence and grace. Sophia is definitely not like other royals. For starters, she has a few not-so-secret tattoos. As relics of her roaring 20s, Sophia has a tattoo of a sun on her upper back, letters inked onto her ankle, and a butterfly on her ribcage. Nothing too dramatic, but still much more than many of her HRH colleagues. There are certain rules to dressing royal that come with the job territory. Although she can clean up in a conservative, structured shift dress when necessary for official photos and events, Sophia can often be seen wearing jeans, t-shirts, and ball caps, especially when spending time with her kids, or attending events for her charities and advocating for children's organizations. In her role as a royal, she's also become somewhat of a fashion icon, often choosing to wear modern and fashionable gowns and outfits, featuring the latest trends by local Swedish and European designers. Sophia goes for classic silhouettes with a trendy flair and doesn't shy away from any color of the rainbow. 
Sophia tends to gravitate toward bold statement accessories such as fun hats, chunky headbands, or the gold full-finger ring she wore to Princess Madeleine and Christopher O'Neill's wedding in 2013. Sophia is also known to show off traditional Swedish folk attire for official family photos, which includes a long pleated skirt and vest with embroidered floral designs. Sophia's choices in fashion go deeper in importance than just looking good on the cover of gossip magazines. Her blend of traditional folk styles and chic 21st century styles represent the way she has approached her roles and duties as a princess and modern woman. Although Sophia married into a life of servants and luxury, that didn't stop her from continuing to pursue her passion for helping children through charities and volunteerism. In 2010, Sophia funded Project Playground with her friend Frida Vesterberg, an organization that helps children from low-income families in South Africa with educational and social programs and developmental support. The cause is close to the princess's heart as she spent time in her 20s volunteering there. Sophia also spent time volunteering in other parts of Africa, including Senegal and Ghana. Sophia is an advocate for numerous other charities and organizations, including the funding for surgeries of cancer patients in Sweden and Save the Children. Sophia is particularly passionate about projects and endeavors involving the wellness and education of children. She's an advocate for learning and dyslexia, as well as the Global Child Forum, a Swedish nonprofit dedicated to children's rights. In early 2020, she returned to South Africa to visit the charity she founded in 2010. Sophia traveled to Cape Town, sharing pictures of her Instagram with the caption, ending a productive and amazing time with my colleagues at Project Playground in South Africa. The charity has done amazing work over the years, supporting vulnerable children. Although Sophia took a step back from the hands-on work of the organization when she stepped into her royal position, she remains an honorary chair of the organization. Along with her main charities, Sophia is a strong supporter of education, arts, and music. She's a musician herself, after all. Sophia also supports the art and photography museums of Sweden and regularly attends events and fundraisers in support of art and creativity. In 2016, she donned a color block dress to an art exhibition of Sven Harry's Art Museum. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, Princess Sophia was at the forefront of aid and support in Sweden. She wanted to do everything she could to help fight against the virus and decided to swap her tiara for a set of scrubs. In April, she completed an intensive emergency training program online, created to offer extra support to strained doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. Being an honorary chairman of the Sophia Hammett Hospital, Sophia was able to lend her time to the front lines. Working as a medical assistant during the height of the viral spread, Sophia did the dirty work of cleaning and disinfecting medical rooms and instruments between patients. She told Vogue via Instagram, I'm now placed in one of the hospital's care departments, where together with other newly trained colleagues, I support and relieve the healthcare staff with different tasks, including patient care and cleaning. To have the opportunity to help at this difficult time is extremely rewarding. Sophia also ensured that the hospital was able to lend staff and support to other care facilities under strain from the pandemic. While Sophia was helping at the hospital, her husband Carl Philip was also doing his part in the global health crisis. The Duke volunteered his time at the Vorschwarschmachten headquarters of the Swedish Armed Forces. In November, the Royal Swedish family announced that Sophia and Carl Philip had both tested positive for coronavirus. The official statement revealed that the Duke and Duchess were experiencing mild symptoms and felt well under the circumstances. The prince at age 41 and Sophia as 35 did not require hospitalization, but were quarantining in their home as the family's doctor monitored their health closely. Other members of the royal family were tested as well as anyone who had come into contact with the couple. With her bravery at the front lines, Sophia acted as a role model not only to the general public, but to others in positions of royal power as well. Prince William and Kate Middleton, at the height of the pandemic crisis, were making daily appearances via social media to boost morale for those suffering from the virus and lockdowns. Prince William also opened a temporary hospital in Birmingham to help accommodate the overflow of care and patient needs. Because she didn't grow up in a palace, Sophia is down to earth and having her in a position of power is an asset to the people of Sweden, as well as throughout her international relations and work. Sophia represents a modern and new way of leading through a direct connection with the people she's serving and offering a positive influence, especially through difficult times such as a pandemic. As modern and forward-thinking people like Sophia join the royal family, the Swedish monarchy, also referred to as the House of Bernadotte, is taking steps to modernize as well. 
It was recently announced that as an effort to simplify the line to the throne, the grandchildren of the king and queen will no longer hold royal titles. Sophia and Carl Philip's sons will still be called prince, but in title only. They'll be free to lead their lives as they please and form careers outside of their royal duties. Sophia shared to Instagram that she sees this change in protocol as a good opportunity for her children and that her and her husband see this as a positive, as Alexander and Gabriel will have freer choices in life. Princess Sophia may live her life a little differently than other royals, but she's always been totally devoted to her position and helping the people of Sweden and the world. Sophia has shown that because of her humble upbringing, she's found a way to use her platform to form a positive influence and help the causes and passions close to her heart. Choosing to be true to yourself and leading by example is what being a real princess is all about. Leave a like if you enjoyed learning more about modern princess Sophia, and subscribe to The Taco for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching!